YouTubers, welcome back to Maxwell Stars Beer Review. Tonight we're going to take a look at one of the beers that was sent to me by none other than the great El Harlock of Hoagley's Beer Reviews, Propeller Pumpkin Ale. He sent me this back in, uh, it came out in September, uh, October, he sent it to me in November, I think, because um, basically as the story goes, I reviewed the 2010 version of this, but I reviewed it in something like June or July of last year. Um, when I reviewed it, it was sitting in Heist Almighty's fridge for about eight months. He gave it to me. I drank it pretty much right away. Uh, and I felt that the taste of that was kind of stale. And I think it thought it would be really enjoyable for me to sit down and enjoy a real, a fresher bottle of it. So, El Harlock was nice enough to send me a uh, bottle of this uh, from last year's batch. As you can see, it's already open. I'll explain why in a second. Um... He sent me a bottle from last year's, from this last year's batch, 2011, uh, so that I could try a gen, um, or a fresher bottle. And what ended up happening is that uh, I got inundated with beer over the last uh, last several months. If you haven't really noticed by watching my channel, I post more bu uh, videos lately of me getting beer than I actually have for reviews lately. Uh, I've gotten beer mails from Albino Rhino, El Harlock, uh, Heist Almighty's gotten fines from, from Nova Scotia and Maine and stuff. Brew by me sent this huge box of beer mail. And of course some, some new stuff that came in in the ANBL stores. So I've been inundated with beer. My fridge is still full and i got to get cracking and reviewing some of these before they start to go bad. So. Uh, don't fear not, there's still more reviews coming from this channel, and now I'm finally getting to this, uh, now five-month-old bottle of, four or five-month-old bottle of, uh, Propeller Pumped Nail. I started the review of this, and then I realized that, uh, my camera was sitting on photo mode, so I took a picture of myself in front of the camera rather than me actually reviewing the beer. So, this thing's already open. Uh, when I first poured it, it had about a finger and a half a head that stuck around for quite some time, and it was a really satisfying head. Uh, a lot of pumpkin smell came right off the top of this one, and uh, immediately told me that this is a fresh bottle of this, and uh, actually smelled quite nice. It still smells quite nice, but I'm not getting as much of the smells off of this as I was. Uh, basically, at first, I was getting these nice pumpkin smells, the nice pumpkin spice smells. It smelled like a pumpkin pie. Um really good but mellow enough to make you think like this is going to be an enjoyable beer it's pumpkin pie but not as over the top pumpkiny as uh, as the uh, harvest pumpkin ale was from Samuel, Samuel Adams this one on the other hand nice and mellow um, really nice mild pumpkin smell nice spicy smell you knew it was a pumpkin beer but you knew that it could be a beer that you might enjoy, rather than uh, you could only drink one of them conceivably before you start to feel queasy. Um, basically, the Sam Adams one is more of a dessert beer, whereas this one's a sessionable one. Anyway, as I dipped into the taste, mm, it's got those nice pumpkin tastes. Like on the tip of the tongue, you get a little tiny bit of sweetness. Throughout the center of the tongue, you get a sprinkling of those pumpkin spices where you get your ginger, your nutmeg, your your cinnamon and it's a really satisfying taste and you get a smattering of, of uh, pumpkin flavoring throughout your mouth uh, which is really nice. Um, in the back though I noticed that it's, it's got this earthy bitterness that it's too there's too much of it, it's too omnipresent and I thought that that was a bit of a detracting factor from the flavor of this beer because it takes away from the sessionability and from the it, it masks a lot of the other flavors. The sweetness in the beer, while there is a tiny bit of sweetness in there, is not enough to counterbalance the actual amount of earthy hops that are in this thing. And I find that it, while that's a little unbalanced, it's still a nice, easy drinking beer, but it not quite as enjoyable as what it could be. It's a little, little too much hops or too little malt sweetness, beyond, uh, be honest. That said though, this is a really nice beer. It says on the side of the bottle, um, Propeller Brewing Company, Halifax's finest microbrewery. Garrison might have something to say for that. Is pleased to offer our fall specialty, Propeller Pumpkin Ale. We make this ale using Howard Dill's world famous Atlantic Giant Pumpkins. With a special blend of spices, uh, this in course in addition to the usual ingredients, 
Highest quality malted grains and hops, water and yeast, big pumpkins, big taste, the best beer brewed here. Yeah, so this is from Halifax, Nova Scotia, 5% ABV. Howard Dill. Um, it's not the largest pumpkins in the world, but they were at one point in time. Howard Dill came up with a new cross crossbreeding res, uh, recipe or whatever you call it strain of, of pumpkins that uh, grew up to be the like the largest pumpkins in the world circa 1984 or something like that. Um, and while they're not the largest pumpkins in the world anymore, pretty much every massive pumpkin out there you've seen them like paddling boats and stuff in the fall uh, with these massive uh, made out of these massive pumpkins. Um, every giant pumpkin breed out there now can trace its ancestry to Howard Dill's pumpkins, which were grown in Nova Scotia. So, uh, yeah, this is, of course, that'd be why the prowler would want to make a pumpkin beer using those particular type of pumpkins. Howard Dill passed away uh, a couple of years ago, uh, rest his soul. But, uh, I remember seeing, uh, one of those big pumpkins when I was a kid at the exhibition here in St. John, and I thought it was friggin' awesome because this pumpkin was bigger than I was at the time. It was cool. Um, as for this beer... I like this better than the, the uh, Samuel Adams Pumpkin Ale. I didn't get a chance to try the uh, the Samuel Adams Pumpkin. Or, sorry. I didn't get a chance to try the, the St. Ambrose Pumpkin, but I like this one better. Um, than the, the Sam Adams. And I think that's because this is a much easier to enjoy beer. But I find that that hop, that earthy hopness, takes quite a bit away from this. And it could be better. Even so, I might as well mark this right now. It finishes nice and dry, and I do appreciate that, but it's that earthy bitterness that gets me. I gotta say that this is better than that previous one, but I think I gave last year's version of 3.5 out of 5, citing that if it were a little fresher, it might taste great. I was right. Um, it's, a little it's a little fresher, and it tastes great. I'm gonna give this a 3.5 out of 5 again, just because last year, Truly, it was a three beer, but it would have been better if it was fresher. And I figured, hey, if it's fresher, it tastes fresher than this, it must be a 3.5 beer. It is a 3.5 beer. I was right. And I have to give it that credit. Uh, is it world class? Is it famous? Uh, is it gonna, something that's absolutely recommended? Mm. It's a nice seasonal if you want to try it. Uh, but I think there's a couple things they could probably do that are a little bit better. Anyway, 3.5 out of 5 for me. Thank you, Will Harlock, for sending me this beer. Thanks, Lee. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, I love watching your videos. I uh, hope you like the beers I sent you. And uh, I'm really enjoying the ones you sent me. So thanks for watching Maxwell Stars Beer Reviews. Chat with you guys later. Cheers.